So density. First of all, density is mass per unit volume. Even if you write like mass to divide by volume, it's all right in this one, but not always. So it says uh, length of a pebble is put in. So if you look at it, it's like, well, uh, this basically has a very small uncertainty. And if you look at it, the uncertainty uh, basically is about 0 0.1 millimeter. If you remember, 0 0.1 millimeter is for vernier caliper. It is not for micrometer, so do not write micrometer. Then it says determine the percentage uncertainty in measurement of R. So we're going to divide delta R or R, and then we're going to multiply by 100%. So 0 0.004 divided by 0 0.04. 420. Right. And oh, there are actually three zeros. 0 0.0420. Okay, that's not. So this is about uh, 0.95. So about, you get right 1%. Okay. Never mind. Now, the density of, the density of the rock or the pebble in, uh, is in V is compressed, composed by this equation. Fine where n is the integer and k is the constant with no units. Uh, that is equal to, okay. Use the SI base unit show that n is equal to minus two. Okay. Well, I'll try. So what you do? density is we need to show SI base units. So density units are kg over meter cube because that's this. Uh, M is kg. R I believe was uh, R was the radius, so it has to be in meters, power n, because we don't know what n is. Uh, then divided by k has no units, we're going to ignore it, and length is n meters. Right. So that is right. Okay. Now we have this, uh, and we would like to write it like this, kg meter minus three equals to kg. If I take this as one, yeah. so if I take it to the top, it will be n minus one, right? Now I can compare. I can compare power of this and power of this. So it will be minus three equals to n minus one. And uh, n will be minus three. So that's root, right? Then it says calculate the percentage uncertainty. So now our formula, the new formula is going to be M R minus two over K L. So I'm going to write it like this, M R K L. That would be our density, right? Now it says percentage uncertainty in P. So that's not hard. What are you going to do? You're going to write delta rho over rho equals to the first one is delta m over m then multiply it by sorry add with the delta r over r you just keep on adding okay 
K has no units, so we will ignore it completely. And delta, oh, it should be R squared by this. Sorry, L upon L. And because there's a square on top, so we will multiply two here. Okay, now we will fill in the values. So M was, uh, I don't I hate this. Let me take a picture of this. All right. And look at it from the picture. So, uh, what? Zero point zero 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 one divided by zero point one two four two plus two times this would be zero point zero 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 four divided by. 0 0.0420 plus 0 0.001 divided by 1.07. Let me check if I've done it correctly. Okay, no, I haven't. This should be here and that should be there. Okay, never mind. So I actually switched places. Huh? That's not good. I should rewrite them. Sorry. And this should be a uh, length is actually 0 0.0001 divided by 0 0.124. Okay. So once you do that, you just need to basically multiply all this by 100%. These are all fractions, right? So we multiply by 100%, I'm, I'm going to get the answer. So let's make the equation. It, you can do one by one and not be like me, that's fine. So 0 0.001 divided by 1.072 plus two times 0 0.0004, 0 0.0420 and plus 0 0.0001 and 0 0.12. So this is uh, about 2.07%, right? And uh, well, with one significant figure, you can just try it. Now it says determine uh, density with its absolute uncertainty. Give your answer in appropriate number of significant figures. Fine. Now since you have this, so delta rho over equals to two percent, right? So what you do? You are going to basically. Achha, Take this value, it's better to take the original value so we get something like exact value. Okay. Now, uh, the value of density, I don't know if we calculated it ever. We haven't, right? That's not fair. Okay, sorry. We have to do that too. So, density can be calculated by the same formula. All you need to do is just put in the values. So M was 1.072 times R was 0 0.0420. Sorry, I got a, it should be down. Z, uh, I got to watch this one. 0 0.0420 and squared. And then... Uh, K, it said it was 2.094 here, and then multiplied by what else do we have? L 0 0.142. Okay, oops, 0 0.1242. Okay, so we got to do this. 
Zooming back in. So much can. So this is 2336.7. So I'm going to write 2336.7 equals to, uh, well, if you divide by 100, it will be 0 0.0207. So, and then you must to find the absolute uncertainty. Now, you guys already know the rules for this. I hope so. So you just multiply it with 0 0.0207. Uh, this is about 48, 48.4. So now, because you guys know the rules, I just want to tell you, uh, it has to be in kg, meters. First of all, you will always write your uncertainty to one significant figure. So 48 means to one significant figure, it has to be 50. So when, once you've written it, remember your next, uh, the, the other answer should be with no decimal places and conforming to the rules. And the rule is, if you don't remember, minimum significant figures or one more than that. So right now our answer is uh, two, three, three, uh, six. So if I were you, I would write it as, because almost uh, the minimum significant figure in our data was three and that's it. So either I can write in three or four. So in three, it would be two, three, four, zero. So that should be your correct answer. You could also write it as two, three, three, six, but that's fine. Both of our answers are fine, but make sure you use this uh, rule. Oh, sir. Uh, you... yes. oh, sir, for the previous question, why did you multiply the uncertainty by two? It's to the power of minus two, so shouldn't you do it as uh, one over four? Why? I, I got it down. The... Sorry, what did you say? It was like this. I put R down. So it was two then, okay. So it doesn't matter, you have to multiply the power, not with the minus. So oh, okay. can never be added up. So minus doesn't really matter. You bring it down, you keep on doing this. Okay. So All that's right. it. Everything, anything else? Okay. Now going to question number two. This took a lot of time, like 15 minutes, my God. Okay, momentum is a product of mass and velocity. So most of you know this, I believe. Then uh, you have two masses moving in the opposite direction. Both balls have initial speed this. Okay. Calculate the kinetic energy of the ball before its collision. Ball X, which is 2.3 speed. So I'm going to use half mv square. That's kinetic energy. So half times the mass is uh, 0 0.24. And the speed is 2.3. Let's just quickly do this. Zero point six three four eight. So uh, you should basically just write it as zero point six three. All right. Now the area enclosed by the lines and the time axis represent the change in momentum of ball y during a collision. Determine the magnitude of the change in momentum. Now this is something you guys need to remember. This is a triangle. Now, because force is change in momentum over time, so you know that if I multiply force and time, it is going to give me change in momentum. 
multiplication means that this is talking about all the area under the graph. This is how we multiply, right? So this, uh, the height here of the triangle is, I don't know, 240, I believe. Two, no, how would it be that? 210, no. 220, 240, 260. It's 60, no, 23. It's 240. It's 240. So it's 240 newtons and the base is 5 milliseconds. Very clever. So please do not fall prey to this person. Okay, then it's 240 and then Five times ten is the next. Okay, so this is zero point six. Now I would write it as six zero. Why? Because I want to have minimum significant figures as two. Okay, then it says calculate the magnitude of velocity of the ball after the collision. Fine. Well, momentum is this, and momentum is m m v minus m u. Right? This is the change in momentum. So it says, uh, find the collision after the collision. Hmm. So this will be zero point six zero. Uh, the mass got to be what was it, its mass? Tell me. Zero point one two. Zero point one two. Thank you. Uh, this is 0 0.12 and this is V minus U, right? So if I divide 0 0.6 with 0 0.12, it has to be someone somewhat 5, you know? 0 0.6 divided with 0 0.12. Yes. 5 equals to V minus U. Now, the final velocity, the initial velocity was, I believe, are you sure? Was it it? A second. Let me see. If I take this velocity as positive and I take this velocity as negative, the momentum did change its direction. Let me see. Right. There is some kind of problem here. So speaking of this, this will be basically added up because that is like going in the opposite direction. So I have to be very careful here. This is 2.3. So my equation basically becomes 5 equals to V plus 2 by 3. If I take it there, so 5 minus 2 by 3 equals to V. And uh, this is something like 3. 2.7. 3. 3. 3.7. Oh, 2.7. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Bad mental maths. Okay, 2.7. So basically, you guys need to be very careful here why I added minus 2 by 3. Because it was going in the opposite direction, I had to take something, right? So make sure that you do that. Then going to this one, it says sketch the variation time t force exerted x during this. Oh, okay. So basically, it would always, it, it would show somewhat similar you know okay let me think about it it was uh, initially of course it was like here so the force on it would have been in the in this direction which we took as negative Now we need to see how much of the, if the force on this was 240, on that it would also be 240. But remember the thing is that it will be in the opposite direction because uh, this is x, this is y. If we have taken velocity as negative on this direction, then this should be negative. So we're going to go to minus 240, which is right here. And we have to just make a mirror image, 3 the 3. So then what I'm going to do is straight line till here and then 
straight line. So it is basically a mirror image of what they saw up. Now, how do I know that everything will be same except for the direction? Can anybody Newton's please... third law? Yes, because of Newton's third law. Because Newton's third law states that a you know, force or an action object A by B is equal and opposite to an action on B to A or B on A. So that word should be remembered. Any so negative two. Because opposite direction, na. Agar x y ko force इधर लगा रहे ये force x तो y force x को उतनी similar opposite direction लगा तो opposite जी if you do this has been do you see ठीक हो गया see it was applied here that if I took if he's taking like this direction, force on y, the force on y as positive, as you can see, then this should be ne negative, this should be positive. So you have to be very careful here. Okay, huh. okay then a uniform metal bar initially unstretched has sides of length. Okay, the bar is now stretched, tensile force shaded. Okay. Uh, determine expression in terms of this for the stress applied on the bar by the tensile stress. Wow. Stress is force over area, right? So this will be T. That's an F here. Okay. This will be F. And that is going to be Y into X, right? Okay. Then what you do? The strain in bar due to tensile. So strain is change in length over original length, right? So it's a ratio. So change in length here, the pale length W T. Now it's X Z. So Z minus W divided by original length W. So we just write this. So Z oops. Z minus W over then the young modulus. Young modulus is given by stress over strain. So stress over strain. My God. Okay, so X will be go up, W will be multiplied top. So I think it should be F times W divided by X Y. Z minus w, like this. Okay. If you have any questions, please let me know. All right. Now going to this. Sure. Uh, for part three, if we leave it in uh, uh, the original form, is it fine? Here. Yeah. If we leave it like that. Yeah, I think it will accept it. Okay. okay. Then the copper wire is stretched in tensile strength increases to eighty. The variation. Now it says state the maximum extension of wire for which it obeys Hooke's law. Now, whenever such question comes, right? So you're going to take your ruler, put it to the start, and then you know just uh, see where the line bends. So basically, it is bending right here. And then when you're done, you will just remove your ruler and then check. So I think it is about two point two point four. Right. So two point two ni hoga. Is it two point two, two point four, two point six, two point eight three? Yeah, three on three. G sir. Two point four one. Right. So it should be two point four. Millimeter. Okay. Then, okay, do not write millimeter again. Okay. Determine the strain energy in the wire when the tensile force is 120. Okay. Where is 120? I think this is 120, right? If this is 40, this is 80. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to go here and we're going to go here. 
this is one. So one point two, one point four. Now this is in millimeter. That's newtons, and I think we need to give it in joules. So one point four millimeter and one twenty newtons. So I'm going to change this. Uh, one point four times ten raised to minus three would take it into meters. Now, half into force times extension is the energy. So half times one twenty times one point four times ten raised to minus. So it has to be zero point zero eight four joules. Okay, this was pretty simple. And now it's saying, uh, explain why the work done stretching the wire to extension of twelve mm is not equal to energy recovered by tensile forces is removed. So, so okay, why when you do all this work, why you can't recover the energy? Because you need to understand that. When the wire is stretched beyond its elastic limit, work done is dissipated into internal energy. Because what you do is you stretch it. Uh, there's a sort of heat induced. Uh, it could also be, you know, due to change in the structure happening. So that's why. So two marks. One for this. One for this. Okay. Then, by reference to uh, directional transfer energy, what is meant by longitudinal wave? Okay. So oscillations. Are parallel to the direction of energy propagation. I would write it like this, and then it says there is a track and the vehicle direction travels like this. There's an observer. Okay, shows the variation of frequency sound that is detected. Okay. Clever. Explain the first thing by looking at the graph. I would say that it's not starting from like it's not. There's no mean line, so they haven't given you anything in the center. So I'll just put it myself. Okay. So the, just to know what is the amplitude. So explain why the frequency of sound detector observer sometimes above and sometimes below. The reason behind this is because. When it is going, when it is here, so its direction is towards observer. When it is here, its direction is away from observer. So we got to write about Doppler's effect, right? So now what to do? So you got to write that for two marks. It is due to Doppler's effect. And you write that which is the apparent parent change change in frequency observed when when the vehicle moves. Relative to stationary observer, right? So this is basically one thing, and then what I'm going to write for two the other mark is frequency is higher when moving towards and lower. When moving away from the observer, so you got to be like one mark and two mark. 
నా స్టేట్ ద నేమ్ చాలు డాక్టర్ all right then says smart letter x position where immediate sound is detected at time t on smart letter x the position vehicle when it is when it emitted a sound that is detected at time t so let's check it is at the highest frequency so i think we have to mark position on figure 4.1 so highest position should be here right ja maine bana di already for some reason i don't know x and then it says on figure mark the letter y position of vehicle when the sound is detected time 9t by 4 what is 9t by 4 what it's is at the bottom sir it's 2.5 okay what okay fine it would be this why can't na why okay oh, but sir cool yes uh i don't get a uh, 3 and 4 cuz uh, shouldn't you place it um right in front of the observer and uh, like uh, like you see where the observer is so just right in front of him in a straight line what does it say it's the smallest one yeah no not uh, not smallest sir i'm talking about the largest why is it here yeah that one, that one shouldn't it be over yeah yeah where you have placed it i know it shouldn't be because if it was here then the direction would be here so it's not traveling in its direction it should travel in its direction. this is the point where it is moving in its direction do you understand no sir but if it's going down then it's going it's still in a circle no uh no velocity is a vector quantity you yeah, have yeah. to be like, if this is here see so from this point it is like going directly towards eh? so the sound is traveling in this direction do you understand when it oh. is here sound is traveling in this direction so how will it reach it here right in no, fact no. in fact he might still hear the frequency here so this is not correct because why he would still hear frequency this should be why because he will also hear the lowest frequency because the sound never reaches him that's why like it doesn't reach that way. so it could be this but that's fine right so then it says the speed of sound in air is 320 use your figure to determine the speed of vehicle in the speed of sound in air is this okay fine when it was moving so the observed frequency was 1.4 right kilohertz and the time was capital t for some reason i don't know what capital t is really and the original frequency is 1.2 as it says here is there anything else we have we don't right no worries so because it is moving towards so i'm going to use f not equals to fs times v v minus t now observe frequency 1.4 times 10 raised to 3 frequency of source is 1.2 times 10 raised to 3 velocity of sound is 320 speed 320 minus v so now we just need to find this i think so what should do try 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 so 1.4 1.4 you guys never help me i'm i'm not very disappointed with you 9320 okay 448000 minus 1.4 times 10 raised to 3 bs equals to 1.2 times 10 minus 3 times 3 okay so we got to subtract this it's okay, 45.7 it's what 45.7 no it's not it's not okay thank you she is the best anusha almira i don't know who was that anusha anusha thank you anusha no problem you're not you're only person not mean in this class Okay now state kilchos first law 
So Kirchhoff's first law is basically the current law. Okay. So current law is that you always write sum of currents entering equals to sum of currents leaving one mark. Second mark is always for at a junction in a circuit. That to be it. Now, uh, current R3 is this and potential R4 is this. Okay, show that R is equal to this. R is equal to, what is R? Hmm, well, interesting. Is this, uh, what is R really? Achha, each of resistance R. Achha, they are the same resistances. Okay, fine. I could do that. This is this, this is this. If this is resistance R with voltage, and here we have the current. So this means that this will also get 2.4. And that's what I believe, right? Or you could say that if this is R and this is also R, then it should also get the same current, right? If this is the same current, then the total current passing should be the addition of these two, which is 0 0.60. So V is equal to I R, voltage is 2.4, 0 0.60 times R. So I need to show this. 2.4 divided by 0 0.60, it's 4. All right, shown. Now. Wait, how is the current 0 0.6? We just wrote the whole law and the law is here if the resistance is R, so the current is 0 0.3, right? Yeah. If here the resistance is the same, so the current is the same. Are they parallel? Yes, they are so parallel. Are they That's the why they have, they, have, they have same resistance and same current. Okay, so she doesn't believe me. So I'm not talking to her. She's not believing me. So I, what I'm going to do is, let me tell you then. Let me tell you. Okay, so basically, Anusha, whenever in parallel we have same resistance in the branch, the current equally divides. Do you understand? Okay. Now, if you still don't, you know, you're like, oh, no, I don't want to. Uh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another way. So there's so many ways to prove electricity. So if all of these are R, then if the voltage, the voltage is, you know, divided according to the resistances, right? If 2.4 is here, can I say 2.4 here as well? Do you agree to this? Yes. Now, in this whole uh, uh, parallel thing, 1 upon R plus 1 upon R is equal to 2 upon R. And when you take the reciprocal, so the total resistance in parallel is R upon 2, right? So the total resistance is R upon 2. If R gets 2.4, then R by 2 will get half of it. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. So the total EMF will be 2.4 plus 2.4 plus 1.2. That is um, 4.8 and 6. six. Okay, you got the EMF. Now, if this is 6, right? Oh, if this is 1.2 and this is the current here, it will also get 1.2. So can I do V is equal to IR? The voltage is 1.2. The current is 0 0.30 and we not need to find R. That would also give you the same answer. But this is too long, you see? Do you understand? Yeah, I do. So there are like thousand ways of doing it, but I just want to tell you that whenever you see in a branch, there's current and 
another branch has the same resistance, then it would mean that this branch also has the same current. Okay. Now, oh, he said because of Anusha, we have already done this for. But if I was, you know, I would not do this like this. Because if I wanted to find EMF, I would simply, you know, it's uh, something, you know, because I would have found voltage. Well, I would have done the same. So 2.4 plus 2.4 plus uh, 1 part. One of the ways is this. Or because you have R, so you can find the total resistance and then you can find, you have the total current and then you can find 6 as so easy to I have. So it's a big. Now, the battery is replaced with another battery of same EMF, but internal uh, resistance is... Sir? Yes, yes. Why don't you uh, what is it? Yes. add 1.2 twice? Because in parallel, the voltage is the same. Yeah, it is the same, but like, why don't you add it twice? Because in parallel, voltage is the same. The circuit is like this, right? Okay. Yeah. So this gets 2.4, this gets 2.4, this whole gets 1.2. Do you understand? Oh, so you don't take them as separate? No, you never do it. In okay. parallel, it's the same. This is my answer to you, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Now, then uh, goes this. It says another battery with an internal resistance that is not negligible. Still, explain the change in any total power produced by battery. Now, we need to understand this is a very important question. I'll tell you one. Because if you add another resistor here as an internal resistor, but if you add it, it means you're increasing the total resistance. And if the resistance increases, right? Because power is I square and R. Resistance, if I were you, I'd write resistance increases. And if the in resistance increases, then uh, current decreases. Now you could think about it in terms of this. So the current is decreasing because resistance is increasing. So power is decreasing more. Why? Because if let's suppose resistance increase, decreases by a factor of two, right? Uh, resistance increases by a factor of two. So current will decrease by a factor of four. How do I know this? Because there is a square on it. The other way of thinking uh, is that uh, you know that if there is internal resistance, so some of the voltage will be lost. So it won't be six volts anymore. So these guys will not get six. They will get something less than that, which means that current will decrease. If you're looking at, at uh, B, I, right? So current decreases and then power decreases. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? That should be it. Now, it says the resistors in a circuit are made from nichrome wire, uniform radius of this. Okay, the length, the wire needed to make each resistor is this. Calculate the resistivity of nichrome. That, 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 that's very clever. Now the resistance is four ohms, we know. The radius is 240 times 10 raised to power minus six. And the length is 0 0.67 and we want to find resistivity. So how do we do this? R equals to rho L upon it. Four, length is 0 0.67 and cross-sectional area will be by 240 times 10 raised to power minus six whole square. That's pi r square, right? So then what you need to do is four times pi times 240 times, okay. This seems very strange to me, but let's stick to it for now. This multiplies. 
and then divide it by 0 0.67. Okay, so this is about what? So 1.08 times 10 power minus 6. 1 point? 0.08 times 10 power minus 6. Minus 6. Ohm meters. Okay. You can write it as 1.1 as well. If you like it. Yeah. So everybody understand this? Now, you see, the thing is that I know few things about, you know, I know uh, estimates. So the moment I see this, I know this is my correct answer. Why? Because I know that very good conductors are like 10 raised to power. All metals are like 10 raised to power to 10 raised to minus 6. They like conductors. So I know that it's a wire and I grow the metal. So it should stay in this, right? So always uh, keep your estimates. They might also ask you this. Okay, uh, number so six. Yes. So it was asking for the resistivity. We found the density. This is the symbol of resistivity, Munir. Oh, sure. And this is the formula. So they have the same symbol. And now I know that you do not know this chapter. You got to repeat it. Yeah. Okay. Over the weekend. Now, complete table 6.1 to show the masses in terms of unified atomic mass. So alpha particle mass is 4. Uh, charge is plus 2. Beta positive has no mass and minus, sorry, plus one. And beta negative, no mass and minus one. So that's pretty simple. Okay. Sir, in the mark scheme, they've given the mass. It is approximately, oh, they have? Yeah, oh, it's no. 0 0.0005. Mm, Do you have to know that? Well, you didn't know, uh, uh, no, you don't don't have to know that but uh, i think they are asking about exact mass and for exact mass i think we can find it so many 1 over 1836 you look at 1 upon 1840 yeah, 1836 that is the mass actually the real mass so that's why they it, it would convert to the same thing so you could write it like this Oh, so let me see what it converts to. Notes will occur 1836. Yeah, that's the same. 0 0.0005. So that's why they're like very clever giving you four marks. Oh. So Nusha, we got to write this, unfortunately, in this, this one. Okay. okay, then it says uh, carbon 14 is radioactive decays by emission of beta minus. Okay. Uh, nuclei do not contain beta. Explain the origin of beta minus um, particle that is emitted from nucleus during beta. So the origin, basically, the origin is that you guys need to understand always in beta minus a neutron would decay to a proton. Whenever a neutron changes to proton, it would give you beta minus plus an anti-electron neutrino like this. Do remember that. Now, state the change in core composition of carbonate beta minus. So, of course, a neutron may down is the prominent one, so down goes to up. Then suggest why beta minus particles are emitted in a range of different energies. So, I have written this uh, also. So, we could say that anti- in this, it's not there, but anti electron neutrino is emitted along with beta negative, right? So other particles, you can also write products also share share kinetic energy okay so don't be like like kinetic energy. right hence 
each interaction, beta negative has range of speeds. So you got to write it like this. One mark for this, one mark for this. Okay. That's all? G safe. All right. So we're done here. Check did you show the last part? Oh, I know. Okay, this was, uh, I, I like this paper. This was harder than, you know, the usual papers I've seen. That's cool. But you see, the thing is, we still have, like, I did it, and I also explained it to you. Uh, so I did it in uh, about, I think, one hour and less than one hour, actually. So I still have like 20 minutes to go through my whole, you know. So I would just like to tell you two things. That do not sit on a question more than five minutes. Yeah, I mean, the first question took 15 minutes to get a lot of calculations. But I mean, do not sit idle on any question more than five minutes. So you complete the whole paper, right? And stay focused on significant figures and, you know, your uh, correct calculations. And do not worry, worry about the question you don't know, right? So when you complete the paper, then you have, you see, you have 20 minutes to just think about that particular question that you do not know. And also, if you get a chance, you can look here and there too. So 20 minutes for that, imagine, right? So you don't, if you sit on one question and then you waste time, so you're going to panic on other questions. And then they are what's going to get, you know, wrong. So my suggestion, do not do that. The other thing is that I want to tell you that this paper is around, I think it is, Six no, it's sixty or seventy-five. I think it's sixty marks. Sixty marks, yeah, sixty. Anna? So sixty marks, may say. If you ever check, you know, right now, how to judge yourself, right? How to position yourself correctly. I just want to tell you this. So you go to uh, the threshold. So we did twenty-one, right? You go to twenty-one. Great thresholds. Uh, 21 March, 21 summer. So there's no 21, you know, winter because it did not happen. So we're going to check March, summer 21. So component uh, two, three. So you see A was at 40, right? So imagine right now, if you have, I'm not going to ask you, but if you are lying in between like 40 and above, You've already scored an A, but that's not something, you know, to be proud of. You should be aiming around 54, right? So if you aim 54, then you end up here, right? And that's a consistent figure. Sometimes the people are easy. They, they can jump to 48 as well. So we have to aim 54, right? And uh, so currently you see in paper two, three, whatever your score today in the paper is, you can expect that grade. Okay, right now. And then the, over the weekend, how to prepare. So you, you have four papers done, right? And then amongst this four paper, like I, today I got to know Muneeb doesn't know electricity. So he will have to revise electricity, right? And then you guys who are like quiet, do not speak. So they should also analyze themselves. Say, okay, I don't know this chapter. I should revise it. Okay. And then you go back to revise if you still don't understand, you ask me, I give you a kind of the class and so on. Chike, is it clear, everybody? Yes, sir. G, sir. Okay, cool. So, so I have to ask you something. Uh, yes. There are these graphs for, I think, bo 